Hello, Alan Steady here with Firewalls.com. In this video, we'll be discussing service definitions. Services are definitions of certain types of network traffic and combine information and a protocol such as TCP or UDP, as well as protocol related options such as port numbers. You can use services to determine the types of traffic accepted or denied by the UTM. To configure services, we'll first want to be logged into the web admin of our UTM. Once we're logged into the web admin, we'll select definitions and users from our menu, followed by service definitions from the submenu. Under the service definitions page, we can centrally define and manage services and service groups. Here we can see the predefined services that are automatically created by the Sophos UTM. Individual services are represented by a single blue line, whereas groups of services are represented by a folder. Selecting the edit button on a service group will provide us details into the protocols which make up a particular service group. So in this particular example, we are editing the service group of email messaging which combines all the protocols that you will need for email such as IMAP, POP3, and SMTP. And just a little tip also, when you click the info icon of a service definition in the service definition list, you can also see all the configuration options in which the service definition is used. To create a new service definition, go ahead and click on the new service definition button. In our create new service definition property fields, we can enter in a name or description of our new service definition. We can also define the type of definition, whether it be TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, which use port numbers ranging from 0 to 65,535. Note that lost packets can be recognized through TCP and be requested again. In a TCP connection, the receiver notifies the sender when a data packet was successfully received connection related protocol. TCP sessions begin with a three-way handshake and connections are closed at the end of the session. When selecting TCP, you'll need to provide some additional information such as the destination port. Here we'll enter the destination port either as a single port, for example port 80, or as a range of ports using a colon as a delimiter. We'll also need to enter in a source port which we can again do either as a single port number or as a range, again using a colon as delimiter. We can also select UDP as a type of definition. The UDP or user datagram protocol uses port numbers between 0 and 65,535 and is a stateless protocol. Because it does not keep state, UDP is faster than TCP, especially when sending small amounts of data. This statelessness, however, also means that UDP cannot recognize when packets are lost or dropped. The receiving computer does not signal the sender when receiving a data packet. When you have selected UDP, the same configuration options can be edited as for TCP. Another type of definition is TCP UDP, which is a combination of TCP and UDP which is appropriate for application protocols that use both sub-protocols such as DNS. When you have selected TCP UDP, the same configuration options can be edited as for TCP or UDP. Optionally, we can configure ICMP, ICMP v6, which are internet control message protocols, which are primarily used to send air messages, indicating, for example, that a requested service is not available or that a host or router could not be reached. Once you have selected either ICMP or ICMP v6, select the ICMP code type. Note that IPv4 firewall rules do not work with ICMP v6 and IPv6 firewall rules, and IPv6 firewall rules do not work with ICMP. We also have the option to configure IP service definitions or internet protocol which is a network and transport protocol used for exchanging data over the internet. Once you have selected IP provide the number of the protocol to be encapsulated within the IP for example 121 representing SMP protocol. So the next service definition is our ESP or encapsulating security payload 
which is a part of the IPsec tunneling protocol suite that provides encryption services for tunnel data via the VPN. Once you have selected the ESP or AH authentication header, provide the security parameters index or SPI which identifies the security parameters in combination with the IP addresses. You can either enter a value between 256 and 4,294,968,296 or keep the default setting given as the range from 256 to 4,294,967,296 using a colon as delimiter especially when using automatic IPsec key exchange. Note that the numbers 1 through 255 are reserved by the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, or IANA. And our next service definition we'll discuss is AH, our authentication header, which is again part of the IPsec tunneling protocol suite, and sits between the IP header and datagram payload to maintain information integrity, but not secrecy. And just like we did with ESP, we just need to provide our security parameters index. And then our last option is the group option. The group option is what creates a container that concludes a list of all of the service definitions. So for example, when we were looking at the email messaging earlier, that was a service definition group. So here, we would select the folder which would then allow us to select either individual services or even service groups that would then be part of this new group definition. So you can use this to bundle service definitions for better readability for your configuration or even management. So just for example, say we wanted to create a service group for Apple Remote Desktops, we could just go ahead and drag both of these over here, give this guy a name, Apple Remote Desktop, and select save. Which we can now see our new Apple Remote Desktop has been created with both of our service definitions. And essentially that pretty much wraps up our service definitions. Thank you for your time.